and we're off. Good morning. I'm Dale Baranowski, and I live in El Azar in Israel. And today I'd like to talk about thinning fruit trees. Uh, thinning fruit trees such as plums, peaches, nectarines, apples, and pears is a very important process, part of the process of uh, maintaining and managing uh, fruit trees. Typically, fruit trees overbear, and in fact, they're uh, fairly, fairly designed and uh, developed to overbear so that they get the maximum amount of fruit production in orchards. The problem is that they typically overbear to the point where the fruit quality will be very, very poor because there's always a, a trade-off between quantity and quality. The less quantity you have on their fruit trees, the greater the quantity, quality. Since the fruit trees basically are um, designed, you might say, in, in nature to put out a tremendous amount of seed, uh, they don't go much for quality. It's us human beings that prefer the high quality and very few seeds. So we, in order to manage the trees properly, we have to do some substantial fruit thinning. Fruit thinning involves the removal of a substantial quantity, percentage, of the fruit from the trees. This allows what, rem the, what fruit that remains to develop to, to its fullest, uh, fullest size, the greatest size, as well as maintain the greatest qu uh, quality of flavor and sugar. Okay. I have in front of me, beside me, my favorite uh, uh, European plum tree, which is growing in my yard. This is, uh, in the States, this is called a damson plum. Here in Israel, it's called sagiv. Uh, the European plums are typically very, very high producers with enormous, enormous yields. And if you let them produce as much as they want, or they, uh, then, then each piece of fruit will not come up to its, uh, its best in so far as sugar and uh, flavor is concerned. So, Typically, here's one branch out of our tree. Um, this particular tree didn't produce that much fruit this year simply because we had uh, some terrible uh, weather during flowering and so the pollination wasn't very high, but still, there's still a great quantity. On this one branch alone, from here to here, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pieces of fruit. Now, the fruit on this tree will come to about this big, and if I would allow it to completely, uh, to allow all of these pieces of fruit to remain on the tree, it would uh, bend the branch down substantially. It would uh, simply, um, simply even, perhaps even break the branch. So, uh, the solution is to start to remove fruit. Basically, for plums, which come to about this big, I suggest having a space, a distance of about yay much in between each piece of fruit so that the branch itself is not overburdened or overstressed from the weight of the developing fruit and uh, start to remove it. Now, the fruit is at bean size stage. Here's the size we're talking about. It's a, almost the size of a large lima bean. This is the stage you want to do it at. You don't want to do it any later in the year because then the tree invests more, more uh, resources into the developing the fruit and they're just throwing it away. The best time to do it <coughs> uh, is when the fruit is at bean size, either navy bean size or maybe large lima bean size. So basically, I know I've left this piece of fruit over here. I'm removing everything in between. And here's one piece, here's the second. And I'm removing everything else down the line. And here's the third piece of fruit. One, two, three. I'm removing this one, and I'll leave this one over here. So out of 16 pieces of fruit on this particular branch, I have left four. So basically all you do is simply, you can do it by feel. By feel, just run your hand underneath. The, the, the plums these days at this stage are green. I mean, there's not much to see. So you can feel them. Heck, I've done so many trees in my life, and it's, uh, over the course of 15 years of working in orchards, I could do this while I'm walking in my sleep. Um, there are some considerations. One, if you all do want to use your eyes, and you see that there are double, two pieces of fruit coming out of the same bud, then you should remove all but one. If there are multiple pieces of fruit coming out of each bud, remove all but one, leave just one there. Because the, the bud is actually a bottleneck 
to the to the fluids that flow into the fruit. So if you have several pieces of fruit, well then it's all distributed among the three, and the, uh, the bottleneck slows it down. Anyway, so you just go through each branch slowly and pull them off and drop them on the ground. Very simple. Um, it also helps to have fruit trees that are very small, very short. This is the the damson plum. Substantially higher trees where it's way out of reach, that's a problem. I really, I really hesitate about uh, using ladders with uh, and dealing with trees because it's too easy to fall off and break a bone. And my gosh, you just don't want that sort of thing. So what you can do with trees that are that are way too high to manage, you can take a stick, a good stout, uh, say a rake uh, handle or a hoe handle, and bash the, the branches and knock substantial amounts of fruit off of the, the tree that way. Uh, of course, it's not perfect, but you know, it's the best you can do under those circumstances. If the tree happens to be overburdened to the point where you've got a year, year of, um, of, where it's a year where there's a, um, what's it called? Um, gosh, I just forgot the word. Where there's a bumper crop, where the extre yield, is, yield is extremely high, and you're late in the season and the branches are bending over under the weight of some severe over, uh, overbearing. At that point, you've got to make a decision whether if you allow the fruit to come fully, uh, to fully ripen and get larger, the, the branches can be much uh, more weighted down and heavier. And there's, if there's a possibility of branch, the branch breaking, it's far better to go up there with a saw and cut off even pieces of limbs in order to prevent, prevent the tree from uh, the limbs and branches from breaking. Better to relieve the weight that way and do some pruning than to allow for branch breakage. Uh, perhaps next year or the next time around you'll realize that uh, you've got a, your, your, over, your tree is overcropping and overbearing and so you should take care of this beforehand. So um, that's uh, one of the reasons, one of the methods of dealing with overcropping. The other reason, there's another, there's another aspect of fruit, um, of uh, fruit thinning that's very, very important. In the developing, the developing years of a fruit tree, it's necessary to strip the trees of all fruit. At least in the first four years of a fruit tree's life, you should strip all the fruit in order to divert all the energy for growth into development. Um, allowing it to fruit within the first four years is uh, simply is, is similar to allow a young girl of eight or nine years old to allow her to become pregnant. The, the effect is pretty much the same. All the energy that she should be used to should be used to help her grow and develop is being put in, used for reproduction, and that slows down everything and reduces the health of the girl, and will in turn also in, in, in this for the same reason reduce the health and development of the trees. So for early trees, the, for at least the first four years of development, you should remove all the fruit, uh, preferably preferably at the bean size stage, or you can even do it during the flowering. However, in those early years, it's, it's also rather important to leave one piece of fruit on the tree. Leaving one piece of fruit on the tree of a developing tree doesn't take away so much from its, its developmental processes. It doesn't divert so too much energy to the, uh, to the fruiting process. But it has the advantage of, in effect, putting it into human terms, giving the tree a reason to live. What happens biologically is that the hormones from the developing fruit goes back to the roots and it encourages the roots to grow stronger, healthier, faster, and that can actually encourage uh, the tree. But to leave more than one piece of fruit on your tree is simply a waste because you can accomplish that with one piece and let it go with that. So in the, earlier, in the initial uh, developmental years, at least for the first four years, you should remove all fruit from the trees except for one piece. Um, there's another reason why you could or should uh, strip a tree almost completely bare of fruit. I have over here, this is my, my more mature, my, my mature damson plum. Over here I have a similar damson plum which isn't quite as old. That one's about eight years old. This is seven years, six years old. This one has not developed enough. Also because I've got this elm tree over here shading it. And it's a problem. 
tree has not developed enough to, to warrant fruiting, so...